Courtney Cox here for Nesson.com with former Sports Illustrated writer Lars Anderson. Lars, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, it's been announced that Showtime is debuting Running for His Life, a documentary about Lawrence Phillips and the domestic violence that plagued him and ultimately led to his death. Um, I watched the documentary. You're in it quite a bit. Um, talk to me about how you got involved. Well, uh, my relationship with Lawrence stretches back uh, about two decades. Uh, when I had just started Sports Illustrated in the spring of 1995, I traveled from New York City to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, wrote my first cover story for the magazine, which was on Lawrence. And um, we dug into his past, and at first Lawrence was a little standoffish, but then we sort of got into it. And he was very open about the fact that he had missed most of his fifth grade year uh, due to truancy. And we talked about just uh, growing up in different group homes. And um, so ever since then, you know, I'd been intrigued with Lawrence. And um, I caught up with him when I wrote my second book on NFL Europe. He was playing for the Barcelona Dragons and uh, spent some time with him over there. And then... um, we kind of lost touch with one another and ended up writing about him again when he was uh, in Kern Valley State Prison and his um, his uh, cellmate uh, was uh, strangled by Lawrence and uh, did a long piece uh, on Bleacher Report and then uh, also did another long piece on Bleacher Report when Lawrence died. And uh, Ross Greenberg, who's the uh, executive producer of this Showtime film, got in touch with me, I think, after he had read that final story that I'd written on Lawrence and just wanted me to, to to come on board with his team and be a part of putting together this documentary on Lawrence, which not only really looks into the just what he did, but we try to probe the question of why Lawrence became the way he did, and especially where did this uh, predilection for violence against women come from? And not to give too much away about the documentary, but there's a lot of big names in this one. Uh, Nick Saban talks about being the head coach at Michigan State and taking on Phillips and being so blown away by him. Then you look at Ray Lewis in it, and he's talking about Miami's team in the national championship game against them. I mean, he made a big impact on a lot of big names. What do you think it was about him in your eyes that really stuck with people uh, when he met and played against them? Well, you know, I, I did the interview with uh, Coach Saban, and, you know, he, Saban said that Lawrence was the best running back he'd ever seen other than Eric Dickerson. And uh, Saban, uh, excuse me, Lawrence and Nebraska in 95 uh, beat Michigan State, which is where Saban was in his first year, beat Michigan State 50-10, to 10, which at the time was Nick's worst loss of his career. And, uh, you know, it was only about six hours after that game that Lawrence attacked his former girlfriend, Kate McEwen, which ended up causing a, a whole bunch of problems for Lawrence. Um, but uh, there's just, there just two sides to him. And, and I think why people remember him, why those in football really remember him, is because of his mixture of speed and elusiveness and power uh, has just been unmatched in his generation. I mean, a lot of people compared him to Gale Sayers uh, in that he just – he, he – was just so immensely talented on the field and yet he never could overcome the demons that were created in his childhood, which ultimately uh, really led to all of his problems and, and why he ended up in in Kern Valley. Well, his former head coach, Tom Osborne, he was really stoic in this Uh, A quote that stuck that struck me was there's a lot of Lawrence's out there, which is so true uh, when you look at at college football in, in general, what do you hope that this documentary does in the sports world and with people that watch it? Well, I, I think we're, we're hoping that, um, one, just when you go back and look at Lawrence's life, I think the knee-jerk reaction that people have is that he was just a thug who threw it all away. But really, you know, there's there's reasons why Lawrence acted the way he did. And I, I hope this documentary spurs more interest in what we are doing with our children who uh, lo- who don't really have a family structure and just growing up as a ward of the state and in a group home, it just absolutely damaged Lawrence to a degree that he could never overcome it. So I think that that quote from Osborne, just that there are thousands of Lawrence's out there, it, it's so true. 
and we need to just re-examine how we are treating our kids in this country. All right. Well, great stuff, Lars. A great documentary. Everyone has to see it on Showtime, 9 p.m. Eastern on December 16th. You don't want to miss out.